champion of the world. The greatest fighter in the history of the sport. One of the most polarizing athletes in all of sports. Liquid Cash I know he's back in your life, helping you follow your dreams. What's up? I'm with my boy Jet here, about to be arrested for child abuse. That's right. Mama's boy. Holy crap. But because of him, How's that feel? you've had to suffer. Suffer? No, they learn. Hard work. Adversity. That's how winners are made. He's never stops. And I always feel like a failure. Don't forget. You're the most wonderful, loving, giving brother. This might be the worst push-ups I've ever seen. <laughs> well, yeah, I learned it from you. <laughs> Thanks for including me. Always, or Got Jet a fight. He's got a bright future. Let's end this now. Jet Boykins is your winner. Fighting isn't who you are, it's what you do. You're laughing. What is that? You've been offered another fight? Unfortunately, it's against me. The most controversial fight in WFA history. Between Cash Boykins and his 18-year-old son, Jet. Every 18-year-old kid out there deserves a good old-fashioned ass whooping. He's been saying that exact same line to me since I was three. You got to dance with the devil, huh? Pray I never end up like you. You won't. Tomorrow night, you die. Dance with the devil, huh? Don't bet on it. Oh, awesome. All right, very good. Hey, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. I think I, I met you on a press day type of situation probably about 10 years ago for a minute. Uh, we were recording, we were, uh, excuse me, not recording, but we were all having a conversation about Sofia Coppola's film somewhere. So it's a Ooh. bit of time, some time ago. Nice. How you yeah. doing, man? All right. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like a kind of a, are you in the basement? No, I'm in, uh, <laughs> in the attic. Uh, I'm in my, uh, uh, it's a ranch in Nashville. Gotcha. Oh, just, Nashville. Yeah. Is that home or? Uh, it's where I'm hanging right now. And it's my place that I got, yeah, a couple years ago and did some work yeah. to it and now it's done. And so I was kind of getting sick of sitting in LA it was the vibe wasn't happening really. So yeah, I, I understand. Kinda, you could probably breathe the oxygen in LA. I'm mean, excuse me, Nashville too. Yeah, the air's the air's better out here in the uh, in the countryside where I am, and it's been kind of cool. And just kind of been waiting for tell somebody to tell me I'm going to do my job, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> I'm doing my job now, I guess, promoting. So <laughs> yes, cool. exactly. So, and I'm I have no doubt when people uh, see this one uh, that uh, the work will be coming as soon as it's safe to do so. Um, uh, I obviously, um, Stephen, you, I mean, it speaks for itself. You've done a tremendous amount of physical preparation for the role of cash. Uh, but I was kind of also interested since I'm sure you're going to be asked by everybody about that, but I, I wanted to kind of ask you about the psychological side of it because, um, especially right now, your character, uh, his, I guess, personality, his, his issues, uh, they resonate, especially, you know, the, well, he's a bit of a bully, one could argue. Um, <laughs> and so, um, but he carries obviously around a lot of baggage. And um, so I didn't know, like, how, how if that required uh, as much preparation, did you have time for it to, uh, with all the physical preparation to kind of, because that's sort yeah. of your... I mean, the physic, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, the, the physical was the, uh, 
was a big uh, because I was coming off of True Detective, and I went right into this right. film because I'd signed up while I was shooting True Detective in the beginning. Uh, it was a film I really wanted to make, and so everybody was worried that I wouldn't have the time I needed, but I knew I would, and and I'm I'm pretty fast at learning choreography. There were moves I needed to learn. I had a great team: Chris Connolly and Fernando Chin and Don Lee, our stunt coordinator, um, provided incredible fight choreography, which really matched what the story was telling, what these characters were saying. And, and, and so there wasn't much to, to change there. So it was really about learning those efficiently, but you know, to play the character, to play the guy, I've played a lot of villains in my career coming from playing good guys recently and, and, and playing really um, incredible people, you know, recently like my character in true detective and really good, honest, you know, whether they're, policemen whether they're you know uh, whatever they are you know different kinds of characters you know playing the villain can be easy sometimes it'd be the flashier part in this movie this was a very difficult role for me to play it was a very difficult Why? to come out yeah. um he's just not he's not a very nice person you know he's a brilliant fighter he's a brilliant businessman he can be funny at times but he's also stuck in his old traditions, probably from getting the shit beat out of him by his own, by his, own. his own father. Right. Um, stuck in these old kind of way deep old school ways, and in, in the way he's you know got all this money but won't help people out. Uh, wants his you know kids to starve to death to, until they become a man. I mean, you know, he's a he's definitely a bully. He's definitely a nasty person, and um, with a lot of flash and mm -hmm. with a lot of charisma in a you know, he also breaks rules. He takes drugs. He, you know, he, he, I mean, this guy is, he drinks, was not, yeah. yeah, no holds barred on the page. So, uh, all id, you know, this, he's this all took, id, right? Steven, he's all id. I mean, you know what I mean? What does that mean? Well, all I mean, in, you mean? He, all id, id. He's all like about physical desires, yeah. his physical, yeah. you know, it's all about going with that gut feeling of and in, in, you know indulging himself yeah, I mean, in every way know, it's probably like you know it was, you know I, I tried to compare it to uh you know maybe back in the day when de niro went into that's exactly what jake i was going to bring up next <laughs> you know, how do you how do you play jake lamada and feel yeah. good about yourself at the end of the day it, it's right. a bit hard it, it's a very tricky but you know then again what we do is called acting and what yeah. we do is try to fill different energies and different um people and and and, and embody something that can translate to an audience and therefore maybe that audience then walks away and becomes mm -hmm. a better father maybe becomes a, a better champion maybe our own champions see themselves within cash and go whoa maybe i should tone this down a bit i don't want to end up like cash you know who knows i tried to take as far as champions that to me resembled who cash was on the page I tried to imagine a Conor McGregor's kind of pizzazz, feistiness, cockiness, talent, uh, stripped of his Irish swagger, but uh -huh. with a Southern Alabama swagger thrown in there to find cash, mixed with a little Floyd Mayweather as far as his business sense and this money and his name, Cash Boykins, and this kind of iconic thing that Mayweather seems to have. And then, you know, look at other champions, look at other fighters, whether it was Cowboy Cerrone and other age groups of guys that I thought would embody who I thought Cash at 45 or 46 should be like. And, and, and me and my directors, Nick, we kind of built him based on that. And then physically and mentally, it all kind of came together. But it was a, definitely a hard one for me. I mean, definitely I would more challenging. You know, I thought when, before I said yes to it. Right. So. Well, yeah, because as you pointed out, you, you played villains that may be more two-dimensional, two perhaps. This was somebody who you had to give, uh, I mean, what, uh, what, more texture to, more nuance to, et cetera. Yeah, like, like, yeah. when you're playing you know, a villain in a, you know, in a comic book movie or, or in a gangster movie, you know, it's tongue-in-cheek villainous. They want them to be cute and sexy they want them to be mean in moments they you know it's pretty you know and then it, in the execution is whether that actor pops or not in that role whether it's jack and you know the first bat you know batman as the joker or whether it was sure you know hans and die hard you know alan rickman or uh it's alan rickman right yeah classic classic yeah. yeah classic you know classic great villains and you know a lot of people you know talk about deacon frost and blade that i played and you know but this was definitely different this was not that this was 
so real and so honest with who this guy is that there's no room for the tongue in cheek. There's no room for cutesiness. There's the, whether he's being funny or not, he is, he is a damaged individual. Yeah. But and- there's, you know, which is an unstoppable kind of crazy combination. You know, it's, uh, yeah. And, you know, I don't want to give any spoilers, so I won't mention sort of the, the last section, other to say that they could have given you the happy ending in the sense of, um, you know, the, the moment where you break down and you come together with, you know, I, I, I just want to say without giving away details, because it's very tricky ground here, you know, like, uh, mm. They don't wrap it up in a nice little pink bow. Let's put it that way. The character still kind of ends up kind of where he started off on some level. Like you don't get that Hollywood ending is my point, right? No, I mean, look, when I was making this movie and it's the great point, you know, I I fought for, um, I fought to have a happier ending and David McKenna wrote wrote one. My instinct was I just wanted to see, but in the end we shot it too. I mean, it was, you know, it was more of a scene where my my kids both my kids find me drunk and you know in my lawn and they pick me up and we hug each other and we walk off into the sunset and gave a a bit of like maybe cash is going to get it together and be a better father uh in the in the little dialogue that was in that scene and in retrospect man the ending of the movie was what david originally wrote and he was right and and the director was right and i was wrong i uh, you know by ending it with um the way it ends is it ends on a beautiful memory of, of a kid that remembers that there are, there is somebody nice in there. There is love in there. And I think in the moment without giving it away, my own film, you know, there is some emotion that I do show in that arena at the end of the movie, at the end of that sequence. And um, in that moment, you know, that he's human for the first time, you know, that, that he can cry, you know, and he's about to, and uh, he's proud in his own dark, sick way of what his son is becoming. And um, um, even though we know what happens. And so I can't give that away or, or tease any of that. But what I can say is, is that uh, I think ultimately they made the right decision. I don't think this is a movie where there, there is a change that fast. I don't think, to be honest, Cash will ever change. Will he become a better father to Quinn and Jet in the, in the future? Will he beg for forgiveness to his wife and try to get his son Kingston back? I think so. Hopefully I would like to think so, but because I, I, I like to think that people can change and get better in time as they get older. But the real, the reality is, is people don't change sometimes and I don't see him changing and I don't see her coming back to him. And I don't, you know, but I do see him waking up a little bit by the end of the film in a subtle way. And that's really all that was meant to give. I don't think the happy ending of us walking into the sunset, Cash is a changed man and he's going to go to therapy tomorrow is the reality. I don't think it's going to happen. I, I have to agree. And that's why I think the, 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 the film, I agree with you, the film does end on an honest note. He's a broken guy. And if you're going to unbreak, you got to do the work. And we don't see him really doing that work. I mean, you know, it's, um, and he will when he's left alone. And I think in a way, that's where David McKenna and, and, and um, life moves on for the, for the good people in, the, in this picture. Um, life gets pretty lonely for Cash because he's still got all his money and all his cars, but a bunch of people that he doesn't know around him dancing on Molly in his backyard. You know, that, is that where he's going to end up as a legacy? Who knows? But, you know, a good movie makes you think about things like that. And I appreciate your questions because they're smart. Cool. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that too. And well, I've already, I've written a sequel here already, oh, Stephen. I've got your sequel right here. And oh, you'll be glad to know in, in in Battle 2 that he ends up uh, back with his wife in a great relationship with his son, uh, his children, I should say. Uh, by the way, I'm kidding, of course. I don't uh, have it finished yet. <laughs> But uh, hey, who knows? Let's see how we do. Yeah, Let's exactly. Well, it's got a good start. It's a new champion. You know, you never know. Yeah. Well, it's got a good head start. It's got Stephen Dorff in it. It's got um, good distribution company. IFC Films is distributing it, so people will see it. You know, it's good. Good for you and good for the film. Um, and 
uh, now I forgot where I was going with it. Oh, yeah, I do remember now. You, he also intentionally made one of your children have a, a syndrome I really wasn't familiar with by name. It's called Williams Syndrome. And um, this is, uh, the, 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 you have a couple of kids, one of whom is uh, the kid you're kind of, uh, what's the word, uh, you're preparing, you're, you're grooming, right, for, to kind of, yeah. <laughs> I guess you could read that now that I think about it, as your way of continuing your mortality, like, you you know, you make your son continue, the name is the top MMA fighter, right, in your, yeah, you I mean, he's basically building, building his son's career, again, Cash is a businessman and wants, yeah. you know, wants his son to work hard for it, but, you know, uh, right, uh, yeah, Williams syndrome. I mean, Colin uh, McKenna is David McKenna's son, our screenwriter, and he has Williams syndrome, and he's just, I think, phenomenal in the movie. I think it, it's so real because it's really him. Yes. But yet he's so lovable and uh, and such a great character, and it was hard for me to to meet some of these young people and actors and have to be so nasty on camera to them. And <laughs> so they- I had to. I had to kind of explain to them, look, when we say action, I'm going to be not a nice guy to you. But, you know, when we're off camera, you're, I'm back, you know, and this is just a game, you know, and this is, you know, you understand. And, 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 and they did, you know, sure. and they were pro. But it's, it was hard. It was, that's something I hadn't really done before, you know. And that, in, in all my years of making films, I, I haven't worked with, you know, an eight-year-old where I'm, you know, beating him up, sort of. You know, I mean, this is not this is not behavior, uh, you know, even of your worst villain sometimes because of how real it is in this film. It's, it's, it's an intense family story, very dysfunctional, very, very tormented. There's, there's a lot of issues in cash. You're a hundred percent right. You know? I was reading recently about, um, or I, uh, this story, Sidney Poitier made a film way back called, uh, in the, I think it was in the, probably in the fifties called no way out. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but Sidney plays, uh, uh, a, a, an African American doctor, of course, and he, he's the, the the what's it? Richard Widmark. You remember Richard Widmark? He's sort of bear a lot, small resemblance to actually, but uh, Richard Widmark, who played great villains, uh, was said such racist things against him in the in his role, and in between takes, he would stop and he would keep apologizing to Poitier because you know he felt so bad, and Poitier goes, "Man, we're acting," you know, but Widmark felt so horrible about it. Yeah. You know, anyway, it just reminded me when you were talking about this thing where you're playing such a beast, yeah. such a, you know, move a little closer to the mic, just to drop, if you don't okay. mind. Yeah, no, it's hard. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's, hard. it's a weird, awkward uh, position to be in, but ultimately we're there to do a job and we have to, we have to lay it down, right? We have to lay down what the text is and what the sure. story is, but young performers did a great job and Colin never having acted before just... I mean, he just, he's a great guy, great kid. It's, a, it's, well, it's a very, it's, I, I'm glad you mentioned Raging Bull. It was actually on my mind when I watched it. And also in that film, you know, De Niro certainly and De Scorsese, they don't turn him into a, you know, uh, some sort of, they don't make it all of a sudden him change just like that. You know, he's obviously bro- another broken guy, you know, uh, who um, is very much alone uh, by the end of the film. Uh, um, but, uh, just to change topics for a second, uh, this is all, there's a lot of MMA in the film. You're like uh, an extraordinarily successful MMA uh, fighter. And uh, what did other MMA, I know you were trained with and you worked with MMA. And in fact, there are some MMA star, stars, people in the actual film. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, um... What did they yeah, make of your performance? And what did they make of your performance by the end of it? Did well, they I haven't give talked you- to a lot of the guys. I haven't talked to. I, I've talked to Kenny Florian, who's a you know legend um, in in MMA, and he he plays one of the announcers, kind of like a Joe Rogan type, and uh, and also Tyron Woodley, who who had the belt and was the champion when we when we filmed. I think he he lost one fight recently. I'm not sure, but um, great guys. I mean, they were really impressed with what they were seeing because they were there for all the fights um, sure. in that that arena um you know i had a great team uh from uh you know don lee is a stunt coordinator fernanda chin um and chris Connolly, really who is a uh, incredible guy who i've been doing interviews with this morning he's in abu dhabi with uh, a oh. couple of his fighters about to have a huge ufc fight out there uh on saturday so we were doing interviews from abu dhabi and uh 
he's uh, he was an incredible asset to the production. He not only taught me moves I didn't know how to do, he helped me learn the choreography. He gave us pointers and tips while shooting on, you know, he then he also played the referee in, in, in the big, in the big fight at the end. He was incredibly uh, helpful and a big asset to the production. And, uh, um, so far, a lot of the MMA guys that normally would, you know, would, would say cheese if they didn't like uh, something, they would be able to smell it right away because this is their world, right? It seems like all these sure, sure, sure. podcasts and places are really finding this to be one of the most realistic UFC films ever, you know, uh, as far as MMA goes on, on in a film story. So, you know, for me, it was a family film. It's a, it's a father and son story set against the backdrop of the MMA world. And, and it's not just a typical fight movie. So allow yourself to, to go the distance here in this story when you watch it, because you're going to, you're going to learn some things. It's not just get ready to tumble around. I mean, you'll, that'll, it'll deliver that as well, but it'll deliver a big punch in some other ways emotionally, I think. Well put. Well, thank you for your time. The name of the movie is called Embattled. It premieres uh, on November 20th. Did you know? Just letting you know that. And stars- Yeah, uh, select theaters <laughs> and, and VOD. Select theaters where we can, where we can Do get it. some theaters are open and then uh, everywhere else at home. All right. Great. Great meeting you or again. And uh, good luck with the film. Thank you, buddy. You bet.